So does your dog panic or flatten like a pancake when you bring out their harness and leash? If so, you're going to want to stay tuned for today's behavior chat. Hi, I'm Tanya Wilhelm and thank you for joining me today. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to click that bell icon so that you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you. Dexter and I appreciate your support. So today's topic is actually a request from one of my Patreon members. So if you want to learn more about my Patreon group and how you can also contribute to what content is posted, you can check out the link below for more details. So when you brought home your dog, you may have envisioned a life of traveling, exploring, going to parks, going on great sniffy walks, but only to find out when you do bring out their harness and leash, your dog may panic, flatten like a pancake, run away, and not want anything to do with that harness and leash. So today I want to address how to slowly get your dog comfortable with this equipment. So if your dog has some underlying anxiety, do make sure you're addressing that too. Because a lot of times when a dog is nervous of something, like the harness and leash, they may have other issues that need to be addressed as well. So I will have a link below in the description about other ways to help your anxious dog overcome their fears. So the first thing is, if you're able to ditch your dog's current harness and leash and start with a new one, go ahead and do that. Because this one already has some negative association and does have a smell, and we know how much that smell means to a dog. So if you have the opportunity to start from scratch, you might have quicker results. If not, no worries, but they might be just a tad slower. So the next thing is, if you're able to keep your dog's harness and leash out, so instead of putting it away, can it be out in the living room? Can it be sitting on the end table or on your fireplace ledge or even on the floor? Because then we can have your dog just slowly go, okay, there it is. It's not coming out to get me. It's kind of living in the environment. Now you want to be careful. You want to make sure obviously that your dog's not going to chew it up or get tangled on it. So if that's not an option, don't do it. But can it live there? You also don't want to take this, remember it's scary, the scary thing and place it somewhere that it's going to block your dog from something. So it's going to block them from going to their food or block them from going to their crate. So we want it kind of in the side where it's not going to affect their regular action. If you only have one pet moving around the house, then the other thing you can do is if this is laying on the floor, every once in a while toss some treats around it. You don't have to get your dog to try to engage in that or or even see you do that treat drop, meaning it's just there and you go, ah, I have a couple minutes, I'm gonna toss a couple of treats there. And then you're gonna let your dog do whatever. So you don't have to show them that there's treats, just on their own they might be like, okay, my nose is smelling something, oh, okay, there's some treats. And they may or may not go up to investigate it and eat the treats. That's their decision. You can also take those treats and put them around the harness so it's more the harness is here and the treats are around it instead of right on top of it. So now your dog really only has to go maybe a foot from it and grab those treats. Play it by ear, see what happens. All we're trying to do is teach them that this isn't going to come and attack you and that this means good things. So treats is another way to incorporate this means good things. The next thing is go ahead and just take one part of the equipment. So maybe it's your leash. There. So your leash is sitting on the floor or your leash is sitting on the counter wherever you have it and your dog's bopping around doing his own thing. What you're going to do is you're going to go up to the leash and maybe pick it up and set it down and say yes and toss your dog a treat. Because what you're doing is you're just slowly conditioning your dog that the movement of this leash, again, is something good. It's not going to come to you, snap around your collar, and be scary. So you just pick it up, yes, and then toss a treat. The yes is telling your dog that they've done something right, and in this situation, they were around the leash, and they're going to get a reward. So pick it up, yes, toss the treat. And you're going to do that every day if you can, a couple of times a day if you can. High value treats such as meat 
that you can incorporate into your dog's daily diet so they're not always extras. So if I'm doing this a lot and my rewards are 100% freeze-dried beef, I can count that beef as part of his daily nutritional needs and kind of cut down on the dog food calories because he just ate some beef. As your dog's progressing and getting comfortable with that, you're going to make that a little more challenging. So I'm going to pick it up and maybe jingle it and then yes and toss the treat. Okay, so do we see kind of the pattern? Pick it up, yes, toss the treat. Pick it up, maybe go like this, yes, toss the treat. So we're going to do different things with this leash all where the leash lives, not towards your dog. So I'm not reaching towards my dog yet. I'm just kind of picking it up and doing things and then yes and treat. We're just conditioning the dog that this is good. So if you can envision this being in the living room with you, you can do this often. So it's like, oh wow, here's a minute. Now I have five treats. I can pick it up, yes, treat. Pick it up, yes, treat. And the more you do that, the quicker everything's going to go, meaning your dog's going to learn faster and faster that this is a good thing. If at any point you see your dog panic and run away and not recoup and come back, then you want to try to make things a little easier. So if you're at the point where you're picking this up and, and doing this and your dog just panicked and left, then you go, all right, that's too hard. We're going to go back to maybe just kind of touching it, yes, and treat. You always want to make sure that your dog's able to eat his treats and be okay with what's going on. You don't want to push it too far. You also want to do that with your dog's harness. So again, you're picking it up, yes, and treat. Picking it up, yes, and treat. So next I'm going to demonstrate with Dexter on how to slowly get your dog more comfortable about interacting with the harness and leash. So let's take a peek at Dexter. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to teach our dogs to interact with this. So I might first start by just showing them and yes and treat. Now Dexter, you know, he's not afraid of the harness. This is his harness. It means good things. He's also used to nose targeting things. So he's going to offer a lot more behaviors than your dog probably will. But we're just going to lift up the harness, yes, and then treat. And when you're lifting up, you're not lifting up towards their face. You're just kind of lifting up towards the side. It might even be on the ground where you're just lifting it up, yes, and then treat. We want to go as slow as your dog needs. So lifting it up, yes, and then treat. So we're teaching them that this is a good thing. Lifting it up, yes, and treat. As you build over time, we missed that treat. As you work over time, your dog's going to get more and more comfortable with this. And as that happens, then you make that challenge a little more. So lift it up, move towards them, yes, and then treat. And again, your dog's probably not going to target it like Dexter is. Up, yes, and treat. <laughs> if he does target, even better. So as you also notice, as I'm moving it towards Dexter, towards the side <laughs> of his face, not towards him right away. So again, my silly monkey, but... We're going to make it to the side. Yes, and then treat. Ignore the touching of the harness. And again, if your dog does that, fantastic. If you taught your dog to nose target things, then you can use that with the harness and have them nose target. Once your dog's comfortable with you going towards them, yes, and then treat, then we can work on having them go into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the harness so that this is the part that their head goes in, and I'm going to lure them in. So we're going to take the harness, open it nice and wide, and take our treat from the outside and go in. So I'm going to reach in all the way and then feed him here. So my hand's in it to feed him. Yes. And then lure him through. Good. And then yes. And then take it back out. So I'm doing this in little stages. And then at some point, let it at rest on them. Okay? So they're slowly just getting comfortable with all those pieces. So we're going to come under the arms. We'll click. And with that click, I also want to treat my dog because it is a noise. treat my dog and again we can yes for that. 
you've been working on the harness going towards your dog, you're also going to work on the leash going towards your dog. So at another training session or part of that training session is you work on the leash going towards them. So now we're comfortable with that, we're going to work on the clip. So we're going to clip under here. Yes, and then treat. So once your dog has the harness and leash on and they're comfortable with that, and that might, again, be a while. So take your time with it. And the more you practice, the more during the day, a couple sessions here and there, two minutes, 30 seconds, five treats, the quicker they're going to get to each point. Treats is we want to teach them to move with it. We don't want to have any pressure on this leash and harness because that's what's going to put them in a panic. So I'm just going to hold the leash. I'm going to have a short leash so there's not a lot dragging. And I'm going to take the food and I'm going to just toss it so that my dog comes with me. Find it. Good job. Find it. Good job. And I'm just moving around the house, giving him rewards and having him move with the leash, but it's not tight. So I'm following him, I'm moving around so we don't have any tension on that leash. Find it. Find it. And once they're comfortable doing that, you can take a couple of steps. Find it. When you're done with that exercise, you want to go ahead and take off your dog's harness and leash. Because you don't want to have any tension with your dog having the harness and leash on. And then again, this can go live in your living room. And over time, inside the house, your dog's going to start anticipating this as being an opportunity for fun and rewards and not to be scared. Go slow and steady with your dog. Go at their pace. If you found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Click that bell icon. You'll be notified every time we upload a new video. If you want to support our channel and even have perks and behind the scenes looks, do check out my private Patreon page. The link is below. And until next time, remember to pause and enjoy life. And we'll see you in the next video. Let me tell you a story about the baddest dog that ever was. Sneaking food from the fridge, tearing up the garbage. He's a goofy old Dexter the dog. He's a bad, bad Dexter the dog. The baddest part that there ever was.